Can you hear me, Theo? Because I can't hear you. What about now? Ah, beautiful. Okay. <laughs> like, like an angel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. How you been doing, Jens? Well, what shall I say? So, uh, quarter is about to end. So, you go long, you go short, but the money's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> I think you can share your screen anytime you would like. Yeah, sure. So I, I'd like to, to ask a question. Uh, what are the four most important, especially FX, but probably in general, macroeconomic indicators uh, you like to look at and use in your trading to know when, uh, well, stuff is more hot than usual? Yeah, first I see the interest rate because they don't refer to the past month. And um, pretty much now you squeeze me with asking for. So you have to pick up another three. I will definitely say the CPI. Okay. Employment rate, absolutely. And um, the non-farm payroll, so once in a month. So most likely next Friday, we're going to have some surprises. In the I market. hope so. I hope so, because uh, we will cover the event here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but very interesting, uh, because the thing is, um, we, we haven't spoken before. Uh, so I can already say that um, you named three out of my four. Ah, um, okay. So um, you, you, you didn't mention GDP. Um, no. But I think um, that that um, it depends a little on what you're what you're what you're looking at. So if you're more yeah. let's say kind of a short term trader, then GDP is such a lagging indicator that you say, well, this is well. If if you want to play a longer term um, a trend or something, then potentially yeah. makes sense. But um, shorter term, that's probably a little uh, yeah slow. Let's say absolutely. <laughs> so. Um, what else? So you named everything. So yeah, um, have a nice weekend then. See you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you so much. Enjoy the session. <laughs> okay. Um. So hello and uh, welcome to today's Trading Spotlight webinar here together with um, Admirals. So it's uh, Friday. It's the 30th of June, 2023. And uh, the last day of the quarter, some interesting um, developments right now. By the way, let me just check. I just realized I haven't checked. I, I checked gold, but I haven't checked Euro USD. Oh, that that's interesting. That's very interesting. So US dollar is about. Yeah, I mean, well, it makes sense, no? Right now, it makes sense to be honest. Um, so because there's one number. Um, so Theo mentioned the CPI, uh, consumer price index, inflation. But the interesting thing is that we as traders, we look at these numbers and I also cover them in here. But in fact, the uh, number which is used from the uh, central bank, from the FED, um, is the so-called PCE core um, price index or core deflator. In fact, this is the uh, favored um, measurement of inflation. Based on these numbers, um, it is sad that the Fed is um, making their policy decisions and numbers came in cooler than expected, which means um, we probably you recall that around two weeks ago, we had uh, the Fed rate decision and um, they came out as um, expected with them um, pausing uh, within her uh, rate hike cycle. But um, when you look carefully at the economic projections, uh, we found out that the Fed um, um, just communicated that they are willing to hike rates another two times by 25 basis points till December, which is um, a big surprise and a hawkish surprise, in fact. It is especially um, surprising since um, inflation, as you um, witnessed here, um, also together with, with us, but probably also yourself when looking at the um, economics calendar on the um, webpage from Admirals, um, well, numbers cool down here. And um, so they cool down, which means that the very aggressive rate hike cycle we've, we've seen with, with Nest over the course of the year 2022 um, is, well, potentially it, it, it's enough. We, we don't need further rate hikes. 
Um, and it was surprising to see that the market did ignore that. In fact, or no, that the Fed ignored it, and the the market ignored the Fed. So saying, well, guys, we don't see you needing to hike rates further um, and more aggressively. And uh, numbers around the PCE now, which were released today, we can have a look at them also here within this event, um, came in lower than expected. And lower than expected means, well, potentially the, the hawkishness um, is not what we get to see, which is also the reason. It's not just the reason why US dollars under pressure, um, but also why gold is just spiking higher while um, equities are also um, pushing higher. Even though I have to admit that I'm um, given that next week we have on Tuesday, Independence Day, and there's a change in, in trading hours. So check out the website at myMarkets.com for details on um, 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 your potential potential affected assets. So stocks, US stocks, for example, are not traded. Um, and there's a shortened trading hours on the 4th of July. And also on um, Monday already, we have kind of a, let's say, uh, to some extent, it's a bank holiday. So it's also um, shortened trading hours, which means that um, it will be potentially a very slow start in the, into the week. But I think um, and, and when looking at the current developments in the market, um, probably probably main reason for, for the current strength, despite the fact that the Fed um, um, signaled more hawkishness, which is usually bearish for equities, especially tech stocks, I would say, but the market held quite solidly um, over the course of the last two weeks. It's, uh, potentially, um, um, an, an, or it's an option, let's say, that this is kind of, let's say, a kind of a window dressing. So uh, big fund managers, for example, buying stocks, especially big tech stocks, who have a big market cap. Apple, too, for example, just um, reached a market cap of 3 trillion USD um, just, just um, recently, I think yesterday, or is it now in the pre-market? I'm not really sure. But however, thing is that um this these stocks are potentially holding the market up and if this buying pressure now subsides or um, diminishes i would say there's an increased likelihood that we are probably getting with a little delay um a pull in uh, but and this is the thing now with the pce coming in below expectations probably the market yeah probably the market won't see such a sharp pull in or However, we might call sharp pull in probably mean reversion trade, probably um, as we might have expected if numbers came in hotter than expected today. But um, today's topic will be the four most important Forex economic indicators. I think we can put um, a Forex here to some extent in quotation marks, probably uh, because it's economic indicators, which also affect um, assets like gold, like, like, like equity indices, like um, equities in general. However, um, so first, oh, I'm sorry. I just realized that's not good. That's the wrong, that's the wrong direction. So I just have to go back here. So first of all, I want to um, give a, a short um, overview of the risks involved when trading leveraged products. So please make sure that you understand all risks involved when trading these uh, leveraged products. They might not be suitable for all investors. The full risk disclaimer can be found on the website admiralmarkets.com. Um, if you are unsure how to um, how, how to how to treat the risks involved, also uh, feel free to um, check out with an independent um, financial advisor um, to to um, find out if these products are suitable for you. Um, in addition to that, download a demo at normarkets.com, the place to go. And also in addition to an indicator I want to present here within the Supreme add-on, it's an add-on you can download for free there too. Um, so we can go to the website in a few seconds and I can go guide you there, download the demo, test trading these products yourself in a simulated environment, and then see whether this product suits your overall risk profile. Please don't misunderstand anything I present to you here today. So this is no financial advice. It's um, educational content, in fact, yes. So I want to make sure that we are on the same page, that, that you get an overview of which um, indicators I'm looking at when it comes to economic news events, and then that you can use this knowledge to your advantage in your trading and feel well prepared when and rather sooner than later, probably starting with a live account if you find out that these products are suitable for you. Again, full risk disclaimer can be found on the website at Um, I don't think that Admarals needs further in introduction. So within the financial industry for over 20 years now, fully regulated, CISEC, FCA regulated, um, ASIC regulated in Australia, for example, there's also um, a regulatory body in Jordan overseeing the business. Um, so 
That being said, feel free to reach out to Optimus directly to ask questions about the regulation, what it could might mean for your trading. Um, very competitive offering when it comes to um, um, spreads. In fact, over here in, in Germany, we usually refer to Admirals as the DAX expert. So um, definitely worth um, 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 a deeper and, and more intense look. One world, one broker. So offices around the globe, it's very likely that you find someone um, speaking your native language um, you can reach out to and um, ask your account related questions to. And but today is um, the day we want to focus on the four most important economic indicators. I think um, um, they are and are worth a deeper look and 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 get a get a better understanding of. So today's agenda, as I already mentioned, I mean, um, Theo already mentioned interest rate decisions, obviously very important. Employment numbers, unemployment rate um, around the non-farm payrolls. This is the live event we will cover next week. Um, also, inflation rate, but. There's also um, the GDP here in this context, which I consider to be to be kind of interesting and I think um, worth a deeper look, even though, especially for shorter term traders, it's not that important, let's say, um, or it's a very lagging indicator in this case, but still worth a deeper look to get an idea also why the current situation um, in, in equities all, um, um, all in all is quite well, let's say difficult to some extent. I mean, we get to see um, a GDP growth, yes, but there's still an inversion, and that's how we how we get to the slide. Then um, there's an inversion in two year and ten year uh, U.S. Treasury yields, for example. So if someone says, "Well, there is no kind, uh, there is no recession," I'm not really sure if I if we can um, um, say that that easily. Let's say. I mean, I see employment numbers are solid. We will see that next week again. So very low um, unemployment rate, for example. But still, when looking at indicators which which are indicating um, a, a recession, like yields, for example, then we can clear see clear signs. And also, um, listen to to um, earnings statements like Nike. Um, um, yesterday, after I was um, after the market closed, and Nike potentially a play for today. Also, um, so they they. Um, give a quite, let's say, subdued guidance. That's probably a good way to put it. So numbers were okay, even though they missed on EPS. I think that was the first time in three years. I'm not really sure, but I think so. Um, <clears throat> but the revenue was okay. Um, what wasn't okay was um, the overall outlook, especially for uh, the, the current quarter, probably also for um, um, the full year in this regard, and, and definitely worth a look. And if you have a retailer, I mean, okay, it's um, um, um sportswear, no question, but still we, we have seen a similar communication when it came to Walmart, when it came to Target, there's kind of a change in in, in um, um, consumption behavior. It's probably a good way to put it. Um, and there are signs of economic, um, um, it's not degrowth, but it's like uh, it, it, it's it's kind of there's at least signs, hints um, um, of a recession at the horizon and something to keep an eye on. And um, so why GDP or respectively growth rate matters here? Um, so economic growth, let's first of all look here at this and then come back to the yields and, and, and how an inversion of the yield curve could signal a recession at the horizon. So economic growth is represented by the economic indicator, which is called GDP or gross domestic product. And it's calculating the value of production for any country during a specific period of time. So it's quarterly, it's yearly. And usually each country looks for bigger growth, increasing its GDP over time. And so now coming to the FX market, usually a rising GDP is considered positive for the domestic currency as it will lead to make more investors trying to profit from the economic growth. So you usually see capital flowing into um, in, into an economy. And, and here, like we, we could say, what's a currency? Um, a currency is to some extent, the euro is, if you want, it's the stock representing uh, the um, um, overall economic health or the economic potential of the eurozone as a, as a whole. Um, the same is true for the US dollar or for um, the Australian dollar or New Zealand dollar, JPY, uh, Japanese um, 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 yen, for example, whatever you might um, um, might favor here. And um, so, well, you usually see um, capital flowing into um, an economy once there's a positive outlook. Now, look, for example, at the developments we've seen in, in the euro USD. In fact, I, I have a chart open right now. I'm not sure, probably... Well, probably I can open one. One second. 
Um, must probably sense to have a look here at the charts. Where do I have it there? So um, when you're looking, for example, at the Euro USD over the course of the year 2021, but probably also in the, as the, the, the um, um, acceleration on the downside um, here, Euro USD over the course of the year 2022. So when we started, that was that was around here. That was some um, the start into the year. That was the beginning of the year. Then we topped out. That was around 115. And then there was a clear downtrend, which brought us down even below parity to 95 around. And this downtrend in the euro, um, why was that? Well, it it, it, it corresponded with a very negative economic outlook um, for uh, the Eurozone um, um, as a whole. Why? Well, there was the invasion of Ukraine from Russia that was in, in February. And then there were sanctions against Russia, um, which, which, which um, resulted in massive spikes, especially in, in commodities. Now, given the fact that Germany is the biggest economy in Europe and Let's let, let's let's face it. Germany is the backbone of the euro. So, which means um, if the German economy, which um, heavily um, relies on cheap energy um, and, and thus from energy from Russia, um, is seeing a massive increase and um, the industry overall taking a big hit here and drifting into a recession, which we've seen in Germany. Um, then you usually see the stock representing the eurozone, which is the euro in this case, taking a bit hit too, and there's capital flowing out of Germany. So there was a, a clear sign that the GDP will not just slow down, but potentially also turn negative due to the massive increase um, in, in energy prices, for example. And there was a clear, clear downtrend. There was certainly also another reason for that. There was um, um, another reason, not just um, capital flowing, fl fl fleeing out of Germany, or not just Germany, but, but also the Eurozone as a whole and the Euro, but also there was um, 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 a clear, more attractive area to be found in the US, given that the Fed started a very aggressive rate height cycle um, within her um, um, approach or target to bring inflation down, which um, went out of control uh, which could have, which is not a big, big surprise given given the lockdowns um, and given the massive monetary stimulus we've seen from the Fed um, to counter the um, um, impact of the um, COVID pandemic and and the way uh, politicians treated or um, 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 counter this this um, um, development. So that being said, brings us back here to the presentation. So. Usually what you see, now we, we, we covered the, the other side of the coin. So usually you consider um, a rising GDP a positive sign because it means there's capital flowing into an economy. It means that there is more industrial production and out taking place. There's more people going to work if you want, more people and making more money because you want to attract the best um, um, um for producing your products, which means nothing more than you pay them more, they have more money to spend. Having more money to spend means that price levels increase as a, as a whole, which means inflation picks up, which means that the central bank counters rising prices here and rising inflation with higher rates, which means that the cycle then is in, in, in full mode, let's say, and, and, and you really want to participate from this economic growth. So this is, um, let's say, a healthy development. Right now, we are seeing um, inflation, or we have, have seen that already, have seen an inflation getting out of control due to um, the massive mon monetary stimulus um, countering the COVID pandemic and the lockdowns, P keep people silent to stay at home and that stuff. But um, so this is usually what you what you get to see then. Um, so economic growth out of this um, um, cycle capital inflows, and um, as a as a result, as you see here in the last bullet point, um, investors have to buy the domestic currency, which naturally results in the value of the domestic currency to increase, and vice versa, as we've just seen in case of the euro, um, and which which I which I made um, um, a topic earlier. So that being said means um, the GDP respectively growth rate is certainly one, and especially when it comes to um, um, Forex, one of the most important um, economic indicators um, out there, even though 
um, it's a lagging indicator because as you can see it here, it's quarterly, respectively yearly um, published. Let's head back here to, to the website, Admirals, because we need to cover that. Yesterday, there was a finalized print. Very important um, because you, you might be interested in, in where to find them. So first of all, analytics, Forex calendar. I think, by the way, Short is not an option in, in Nike anymore after they gap down. I just have it here on my on my second screen. So equities are are running higher into the into the into the quarterly close, which is by the way not very positive. So I don't want to buy that. I don't want to chase that. Usually you don't want to see markets making new highs, not making really new highs, but uh, you you don't want to don't want to chase that. So I think there's an increased risk that um we we get to see um um a quite aggressive rock pull based on this current run higher. We can also take the DAX for example. But coming back to the forex calendar, I'm sorry. Um, so forex calendar, we filter that high impact and then. Let's, let's filter with the most important events, for example, and let's cover the whole week since Monday and apply the filter. And there you can see it. So these are the most important news events of the week. There was this um, ECB forum. That was probably also the reason why we've seen kind of a push lower yesterday. By the way, let me just... I'm not really sure what, what, the, what the main reason was. Oh, it's okay. Okay, it's London. Um, but yesterday... It's not even in here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me just go there then and then probably take the others out so that's, that we don't have too many news events here showing up now. So there you can see that. Um, yesterday, June 29th, so today is the 30th, you can see GDP growth rate, Q on Q, and there's the number, final. So the numbers are released, in fact, um, at the end of each month. In fact, that was now the print for the um, um, first quarter, and it's the finalized one. So you see, in, th in, in fact, three measures of this number. And by the way, let me just go over here to trading economics. Um, it's a very nice way to, there we have it. That's obviously the, the, the reason for the current bullishness. Um, in equities, but go here. So that's the GDP growth rate. And there you can see it. It's three numbers. Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm sorry. So have been have been three before yesterday's release. So you can see here. So there's a um, um, first estimate, a second one, and then a final number. Um, and they give them out at the end of each falling quarter after the end of the quarter. So that means at the end of July, we'll have, as you can see here, we have the first estimate for the second quarter and then have a second guess or a second estimate at the end of August. And then we have a finalized one at the end, a final real number, let's say, at the end um, of, of the um, third quarter. So at the end of September. Um, they only marginally change, by the way. So it's it's it, it's usually it shouldn't be that you have a print of let's say one point one percent and then three point five um, in the second estimate. It could be, but it's very very unlikely. Um, so very interesting. Keeping that in mind, if you have ever wondered why you can read something like final here, and and again you can see also estimates, first estimate, second estimate. So if they don't surprise that much, they usually don't affect the market that much, but they give an overall tendency and there's a trend. And, and that's something you, you want to keep an eye on, especially if you're a longer term investor, let's say, um, when it comes to when it comes to 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 to, to currencies. And if you want to catch her, let's call them bigger moves or bigger trends. But as a short term trader, you usually don't spend much time on GDP because um, usually you have a quick impulse in one or the other direction, probably it's a reason to um, um, go back into a trend which the currency XYZ has um, 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 already established earlier. But it's usually nothing you keep an eye on from a very short-term uh, trading perspective. But, but interest rate decisions are something different. So interest rate decisions... Um, we, well, I, I'm not really sure if we if we really need to 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 explain why they matter. 
Um, so when it comes to interest rates, you can see it here in the bullet points already. When it comes to interest rates, we speak about the potential yield an investor buyer of a currency can expect to earn, respectively has to pay if he wants to borrow money, for example, from a bank. And if a central bank decides to increase interest rates, for example, during times of significant economic growth or raging inflation, as we currently see, even though we don't see an environment in which we have significant economic growth, then it should naturally result in higher demand of the local currency in order to get a higher return on the investment, also to cover for the inflation, and um, vice versa. The interesting thing probably is um, what, what's more interesting, and, and, and certainly interest rate decisions um, have a tendency to, to result in, in um, elevated volume, um, or not just elevated volume, but also elevated volatility, um, and, and usually can act as kind of a, let's say, give levels to trade against or to look at and then expect a certain move to happen. For example, let's go to the last rate decision from the Fed and then from an intraday perspective, why that um, 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 was of interest. You probably recall that. We, we also covered it here. So this is a 50-minute chart now in the NASDAQ. And let's just... Go back here. So that was the Fed, the Fed day. And as you can see here, so that's the low, respectively, the high of the Fed. And the interesting thing was I expected the drop below that level, even though the next day we broke to the upside. So there was a there was a not just increased level of interest during the event itself. But it also gave us level to um, keep an eye on the next day and to probably trade off from. And once we broke above and we held, so this is a 50-minute chart now. So you, you can't clearly see that here. But when we broke higher and 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 it was just a, well, it was a natural thing to to happen to see a squeeze higher because most market participants who bet it, uh, who bet it, who bet on um, 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 the NASDAQ, being short following a quite hawkish um, stance from the Fed just had to cover um, and, and we're squeezed out of the positions and the market just shot higher. And, and then we, we turned higher from here. I think that was um, that was also something we covered here within the event. I'm not really sure um, um, if it was a live trading event, but I think we, we made it a topic here that this was um, client, probably kind of a small blow off probably. And then from there, we trended lower. But for short-term traders, um, the rate decision itself, we just don't know in which direction the market will head. But given the highs and the lows of the reaction candle, and then also our BS based on um, what to make out of the numbers and, and, and how to interpret them, we can use them to um, trade of them. And once we go above these levels, we want to be long. While once we go below that level, especially if there's a delay of, let's say, one hour, um, one hour, I'm sorry, um, um, one day, then you usually wanna wanna be wanna be um, um, you wanna be short on the downside once we break below that level. By the way, let me just um, let me just check out a number here. We're very, very important for me to keep an eye on um, because after we finish the event here, I will head right into the action here. I want to give the market some room to um, find a fair price level, let's say. So, but coming back, coming back to the presentation, um, what I think is more important or to understand why interest rate decision, not, not really why, but, but how um, do central bankers find a fair level? So what, what numbers do they use? So, so how can we imagine that to happen? So, I mean, certainly they run models and they, they have all the economic data available in all, let's say in Europe, for example, in all um, um, EU countries, for example, and then take these numbers and, and, somehow um, model like the fair interest rate level and what the interest rate, uh, rate level should be. So to some extent, a very complex question, but as a rough rule of thumb, they use a model or they use a rule, which we refer to as the Taylor rule. So central banks usually find um, the fair interest rate levels 
um, the fair yield value based on something we refer to as the Taylor rule. Given the QE we've seen following the great financial crisis and um, also the massive QE um, following the COVID pandemic, I mean, um, they, they certainly, right now at least, are um, far off from the fair um, 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 yield level. But usually, theoretical terms usually should expect um, that the central bank in a, let's call it normal um, economic environment, um, should the, 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 the Taylor level, the fair yield level, should be very close to what a central bank um, gives out as a, as a, as a um, um, yield level here in this regard. And um, so you can Google it yourself. So um, this is a chart from, from, from an external website. I just um, um, sniped it out. It ends at the end of 2019. We've probably seen that here, the black line is obviously rising higher. So there was already clear signs that there should be a higher yield level in terms of the ECB in this case. So we're looking at the Eurozone. Um, and the the um, ECB didn't follow. Then we saw a sharp pull in, and a very long time the the ECB held yields at a level which were just too low for too long. So that was the reason why they had to hike aggressively. Yeah. Well, probably it's better to to use the um, 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 Fed here, the U.S. central bank. Same is true for for um, 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 their rate hike cycle. Let's call it. So very, very uh, far too low for far too long. And then you have to hike aggressively to bring back um, inflation under control, raging inflation under control. So long thing short, if you, want, if, if you were ever wondered where do interest rates levels come from and why the central banks X, Y, Z say this is the fair level, interest rate level, they have their models certainly, but in the theoretical world, the Taylor rule here gives you, based on input parameters like employment numbers, for example, also inflation, certainly economic growth, they give you um, a fair yield level, as at, at least from a theoretical perspective. So then, and then the next also mentioned from Theo already earlier, very important economic indicator you should have a keep an eye on is the employment, respectively, the unemployment rate, especially. So. Employment numbers are very, very important. It's no coincidence that we cover them here in um, um, our, our um, um, monthly events each Friday at the first of each Friday. Usually non farm payrolls are released, probably one of the most important economic indicators out there. Um, so, and the question is certainly why are these numbers of importance? We also mentioned this several times, but let's um, um, go through these points here once again. So unemployment rate, um, is the number of unemployed people from the workforce in any country. And it's an important indicator. I think it's self-explaining already because the first sentence says it. Um, um, it, it it's, it's an important indicator, which should be very um, um, carefully interpreted here as, as it's one of the main drivers of economic growth, obviously, and thus price movement in the underlying currency. So, which means nothing more than if you have higher unemployment rates, for example, well, that the economy, that, that's an obvious sign that the economy is slowing down because companies are not hiring people or they are firing them. Um, and thus the, the, the unemployment rate should rise. And this is usually a sign of a um, slowing economy here. Um, and it's one of the most, uh, one of the most, we already covered this um, um, too at the beginning here of this slide. So and next Friday will be the next time. So one of the most important news releases in the FX market is known as the NFPs or the so-called non-farm payrolls. It's published every first Friday of the month, not every time, in fact. So there's sometimes a delay. I've never really seen through why um, there's one, once or twice a year, a month when it's the second Um However, so usually it is the first Friday of the month. So next week, um, we have the first Friday and thus the non farm payrolls will be released. And um, it's giving us an information of the biggest economy in the world and their employment situation, the United States. And it should be considered probably as one of the most important economic indicators from Forex traders after the GDP and interest rate decisions, probably probably even ahead of them, especially for short-term traders. And what I have here is an is a example. It's an it's an example which is which is um, um, a little older, let's say. So euro was trading around 120 back then. I don't really know when I took this screenshot. Um, and the thing is that it's a little. It, it depends a little on the mode in the market, let's say. 
um, if there is increased volatility. But in this example, you can see that there was a 100 pip range um, on the upside, on the downside. So spike higher, spike lower here on a 50 minute chart in this case. And um, so you can see increased volatility in the underlying currency, given the fact that you, you probably might wonder now, well, if we look at employment numbers, there's, for example, let's go back here to the um, economics calendar. So you see here initial jobless claims, for example, uh, this the, these numbers are released each um, um, Thursday. So really each Thursday you get these numbers, initial jobless claims, but you probably have not seen that much volatility around this event. Well, the reason is very simple because it's, a one week release, which means you have a very clear expectation and there shouldn't be big surprises on the upside, on the downside. The non-farm payrolls, on the other hand, are released only once each month. So it means um, you're missing information and thus the, the that's called a surprise factor is much greater. And the more surprise there is on the upside or on the downside, the higher the volatility in the market because the more off market participants are caught, in fact. Um, and this is the reason why the non-farm payrolls release are, are such a very important and, and, and um, um, highly anticipated event each month. And next week, we will cover uh, the event live here um, with Admirals together in the next trading spotlight and then put potentially, hopefully, spot potential trading setups. Let's see where we are next week. So again, so we're coming, by the way, let me just check. Probably we can check it here together. Where do we stand right now? we have so first 15 minutes of trading 10 minutes we're coming in not nasdaq five minutes spike on the upside again the question is is it really a sustainable move i think we should be really 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 careful you don't want to chase this right now i think there's an increased likelihood that that we will see um a lower high from here or probably we'll we get to see some kind of stuff into the yearly highs and thus the the highs here from from march and i think probably I'm not saying that we're entering a next bear mode here. Um, I think the overall environment is certainly completely different right now. But I I, I would say we should be really, really careful um, here um, to buy this or to swing a position now. So in fact, yesterday I was um, I came across a potential swing play um, in a stock. And um, I was wondering, I was like, hmm, that's, that's an interesting signal. I'm probably thinking about taking some over the weekend. And then I just realized, well, that's a prolongated weekend, no? So we have a very, very um, thin environment right now. Into the quarterly close, we look very extended on the upside, given the overall um, 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 communication we've seen from the Fed. I'm not really sure if this is um, um, something something to, to really uh, trust, let's say. Um, and then you really think about, well, probably if, if there's no support from the overall market, I don't want to be long, even though the setup looked nice, but it's not something I, I want to I wanna, um, 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 think about, let's say, over the weekend here in this regard. And it's it's also a stock I've never traded before. So I really um, need to, to, to go through several details, some fundamentals, how many stocks are traded on, on average and that stuff. And given all this, and if I combine that, I, I say, well, probably I should skip this trade and just wait until there's a clearer sign. So, I mean, certainly if I'm completely um, I'm, I'm wrong here and if we're breaking out now, if we break and hold above these um, levels in the NASDAQ, well, there's no reason um, um, then not to, to say, okay, we are still bullish. But I think, especially in the quarterly close, well, probably we will have a chance of, of making a lower high here, rolling over. And probably testing, probably even dropping uh, the most recent lows, which can be found around 14,700 and probably about to, to see a retest of this. Um, um, yeah, probably probably this 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 EMA 50 here on a on a um on a daily chart in this in this regard. So probably kind of a mean reversion we are about to see. I'm not I don't really see us breaking sustainably higher. And now we have also a driver. This brings us perfectly to the next and, and final um, um, economic indicator we want to look at here, um, the inflation rate. We have a trigger for the current bullishness in case or in terms of the PCE. We will look at this number here. I haven't um, put it there. As you can see there, um, there are several. You can see the CPI, the consumer price index. You can see the core CPI. You can see the PPI, the producer price index. 
um, but you can't see the PCE. Um, but this is potentially the, the driver for the current for the current um, um, bullishness we are we are we are witnessing here. But let's have a look here at the inflation rate and what it what it covers. So inflation rate is a term which is used in order to express the rate of change in prices of goods and the services um, in a country. And um, so there's several ways to to look at inflation. So the most used one um, is the classic CPI, Consumer Price Index, which is published on a monthly basis and is re representing the rate of change in a basket of goods and services that are bought by consumers. Highly manipulated. So, like, um, if you look at at uh, um, an inflation from a from a from a basket, you were looking at in the 1980s or 1990s in the US, especially. Well, uh, you would find out that um, we are crazy, uh, cra cra crazy levels of inflation. While um, if you if you adjust it, because there is some adjustment in in terms of the um, um, behavior of um, um, consumers. Not really sure if that's if that's really the case, um, but at the end of the day, it's a number you have to present, um, especially to your to your voters, and that's or it's not it's not it's not the the the, the um, um, administration in the White House which is publishing these numbers. Certainly, it's a bureau. It's a bureau of labor statistics. I'm not really sure. I think no, I don't really know if it's a BLS. I'm not really sure. But however, the thing is, um, it's highly manipulated. And um, so usually what you want to do is um, to get a better idea on um, where consumer prices are, you usually look at the core CPI because the core CPI is the same number as the CPI, but it excludes volatile goods like food and energy. So there's a better um, measurement. And by the way, when looking at the current environment, and you probably have wondered, where is this, this, this um, quite aggressive, let's say, dot plot coming from um, with two further rate hikes, um, even though inflation in the US came down from last year. So last year, we had a print of 9.1% at the same time. Um, and inflation was running really, really hot. And from there, there was a constant decrease in numbers. So we, 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 we saw 12 months in a row, we saw a print which was lower than the month before. And um, coming in at four percent, and and having now the Fed, um, 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 um the target rate here, um, at five hundred to five hundred twenty-five basis points, you might say, well, we are above the current inflation rate. So why are they talking about more restrictive stance? It could be that it has something to do with current inflation because core inflation is still above 5%. And it excludes volatile goods like food, but also energy. Energy has come down massively from the spikes higher last year after the invasion of the Ukraine by Russia. So that being said, is probably the reason why the Fed is considering hiking rates further um, 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 by, uh, um, um, further two times in this case. Um, and finally, there's also another way to uh, look at the the um, um, inflation with the producer price index. So it measures the rate of change of prices of inputs and outputs of goods at factory gates. So that means um, the higher the prices, um, the producer has to pay for raw materials to produce good X, Y, Z, well, the higher the price for the consumer will be. It's not that it's forwarded 100%. Um, so, for example, there, there were there were inflation rates here. Producer price um, 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 index rose to fifty percent, or the highest levels in the um, 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 in Germany since World War II. Uh, in fact, it was the high. It was even higher than that after World War II. That was over the course of last year, and now it really nearly collapsed. Um, and so, but these prices of of of, of an inflation rate CPI of 50% that wasn't seen in Germany. Um, so because the producers, they just couldn't forward the prices because no one would buy the goods anymore, which means like they um, see a drop in their revenue, which means making, making, making no more business, which means potentially they're going out of business. That's why uh, too high inflation is usually negative for um, the underlying economy. So even though you might say, hey, great, high inflation, high interest rates and high yield, well, you still, um, if you're investing in the underlying currency, you don't wanna invest purely and only solely for um, the sake of um, higher yields because if inflation is um, killing the um, um, underlying industry or economy, well, you don't wanna own the stock of this economy, which is the currency XYZ. 
Um, and so the interpretation, interpretation, again, of inflation depends mainly on the economic cycle in which we are in. So right now we have high inflation, but subdued economic outlook or growth outlook, in fact, um, completely different from an environment in which we see um, the, the, the companies investing, hiring more people, paying them higher um, salaries so that they spend more money and, 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 and pay higher prices for the goods they produce. And you have a, let's say, healthy, um, positive um, um, economic development. Let's finish up um, with the tool I was I was um, talking about here earlier and where to get it. So head over to the website at mymarkets.com and there go to platforms, download a demo. Then you can get it MT4, MT5. Um, and here, this is what I'm referring to. It's the MetaTrader Supreme Edition. And um, it's a tool which is completely for free. You you re you remember that because um, in our live events, live trading events, you know that I'm using here the mini terminal um, very heavily, in fact. And there's lots of other very great um, 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 tools included, like a trading simulator, like, for example, here, um, an, an integrated, stay connected, real-time news um, you can not just get real-time news, but also um, have a trading journal right in the um, 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 implemented into the MetaTrader, for example, um, and so on and so forth. So, but why we mention it today is because of this tool here. So you can highlight all these economic events right into your MetaTrader, and that's just an example here in this in this regard. So here are the news events. Um, this is the way they are displayed, and then you can well, well, you can you can obviously get them right into your MetaTrader and trade them. So you're um, you don't need to switch between the economics calendar on the website from Admirals and then go to the MetaTrader, but you can highlight them here, individualize it based on the currencies you're trading and which um, use events you want to want to focus on, and then take it in fact from there. So that's it. Um, in regard to the Supreme Add-on Economic Calendar, I highly recommend it. Again, download it; it's for free. It, you can it's 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 a it's an add-on you can download and, and and just add to your to your MetaTrader MT4 MT5 depends on which one you 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 prefer. And um, that's it from my end. So I hope you learned something. And um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Admirals directly. If you watch the recording now on YouTube, please. Um, subscribe to the YouTube channel and set a reminder that you don't miss any of the videos which we, do, which we produce here for you. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment um, in the um, um, comment section below. And um, we see each other again uh, next week on Friday and then covering the non-farm payrolls release and trading them live. And uh, that's it from my end. So happy trading. Watch your stops. Have a nice weekend. Enjoy yourself. See you. Bye-bye.